All right, so I've got my music going. I've got the live going. I'm so excited that it's working, and it's working the way that it's supposed to. If you guys haven't uh, uh, dealt with any crazy technology stuff, well, it's uh, it's just another world out there. And so, um, anyway, uh, I would like to dedicate to this show to someone that I've never, ever met but has had an enormous impact Passed away a couple years ago. His name is Roger Ridley. And Roger doesn't have a Lyme disease. Matter of fact, there's really no connection other than this. I, uh, I have this music connection that I really enjoy music. I was hunting around uh, on YouTube and I ran across the voice of God, also known as Roger Ridley. And he did a cover song on Stand By Me. But what was amazing about the great song you guys should totally check him out. But here's the fascinating thing about uh, Mr. Ridley is, is as they were getting ready to set up, he, they have this interview with him. And it's like one of the most genuine things I've ever seen of him saying his sole purpose. And what's his sole purpose? And he said, hey, I'm in the joy business. You know, the world's a really tough place. And if they have a really good song, it gives them a little bit of relief. Like, it was just so unbelievable. And the reason why I think that resonates so well with me is like, this is one of my favorite things to take care of. It's difficult. It's hard. It's, we're talking about Lyme disease. But here's what's fascinating about this is when you help people to get their body in balance, like you can beat a lot of different things. And as he said, I'm in the joy business. Well, what, uh, what, he, what we were talking about is, you know, we're kind of in the Lyme business. So I got to fix my um, overlay right here. Let's start talking about this unusual, misunderstood disease called Lyme disease. So let's get right into it. This is the Lyme disease workshop. If you, it's a free masterclass. This is a multi-part series. I think it's so important to understand and it, because it has so much crossover into different conditions. So if you like exactly what I'm talking about, just click on the, the download link below. That's one of the things that's uh, really nice to know about. And then the second thing is that's your resources. I'm going to be talking about things that you can do at home, whether you're across the street or across the country. It's something that is so important to know about. So I just want to make sure we've got everything dialed in on. Yep, here it is right here. Okay, so I got some neat things in here about uh, basically an at-home vitamin C treatment called Deep C. Also, this Native American herb called Lomatium, uh, potassium, betaine hydrochloride. Like I, I've got some really neat things for you to know about. Um, it's all in a bundle below, but what's really important is the resources. So the purpose behind doing the live shows that I have set up this way is this. I want to make sure that people know their options. Like one of the most frustrating things I see in chronic healthcare world is this, is people say, I wish I would have found you or someone like you before I would have started down a different pathway. The purpose of these master classes is to help people understand that it's not always a name it, blame it, contain it medicine. Like it's so frustrating when I hear that, when people will say, look, you get a diagnosis of blood pressure and then we give you a blood pressure medicine until you die. That's so frustrating. Why is it so frustrating? <laughs> what caused it? And then let's fix that. It's the same thing with like canker sores, uh, cold sores, uh, a skin rash, an irritable bowel syndrome, uh, an abnormal hormone cycle. Like, let's figure out what it is that made you get the problem and then try to reverse that. And Lyme disease and West Nile virus and Epstein-Barr virus are, are the same. So we just got to figure out what that is. So I'm going to be talking a lot about the resources underneath this. Matter of fact, I'm going to pull those up right now so that I can follow along and make sure that I talk everything about this, this therapy that we're talking about in this treatment because people need to know what a huge problem this is. And, and if you've had it and you've been diagnosed with it, what happens is you become a researcher on it and then you get, like people go through stages of grief, they get frustrated and then they're like, hey, how come I didn't know about this before and, and why is there a cover up and, and where is it coming from? And, and, and it's, it's such a significant problem. Okay, so let's just jump right into it. Lyme disease is one of those crazy, clever, clever diseases. 
or, or the bacteria that causes, like, I hate it, but I also, like, I, I give it props from a biologic standpoint. And, and what does that mean? Like, it, it's an amazing adaptive, like, I'm kind of in awe of this organism, this Borealia burgdorferi. And one of the things that's so important to know about is that there's different phases of this bacteria. Now, this is my opinion. And, and with all of the concerns right now with the bug from China that's coming out, one of the things that's so concerning is all of a sudden this medical freedom of, of providers being able to give their opinion that's not exactly mainstream, like we've lost it. That's why I took the show off of Facebook and off of YouTube and put it on this platform so that I can be genuine and authentic. I can tell you what's happening inside of the trenches like what is what is happening every day when i go to work and i see like i have a, a full practice full schedule every single day and i want to tell you this is what i see is helping people so many people get in this rut of hey one size fits all medicine this is so wrong this is the way that you cannot make progress if you are getting treated with a one size medicine approach it's not working like it's not the pathway to health there's a person in there that's why in the office we always talk about you're not your diagnosis you're not your like you can beat your disease you got to treat the person in there and there's no such thing as an epstein-barr protocol there's no such thing as a lyme protocol there's no such thing as a cancer support therapy there's a protocol for jason there's a protocol for Linda, there's a protocol for Macy and for and for Misty and for Carter. Like, if you treat the people like that, you get outcomes. So, the, the reason why I say that is because, in my opinion, Lyme disease has has different lifestyles. It's just not always a bacteria. And a big shout out to one of the experts in the Lyme disease world. Excuse me. <coughs> his name is Brian Rosner. I give props to Brian. Like I, I've read his stuff and he. He has this book where he talks about the different phases of Lyme. This is why I think one of the reasons it's so hard to test is because it, it, it changes kind of like a caterpillar and a butterfly. And this is what I think. This is my medical opinion. That's why I started off on this thing. If you want to mandate something, like you should mandate medical opinions, not medical treatments. Mandate uh, the freedom to tell people like this is what I really think is going on. But the accepted thing, and, and this is, you guys, this is the fascinating thing about Lyme disease and how I got into the Lyme disease world, which I think is such a, a problematic infectious disease, is, is by accident. So here's my Lyme story. I had um, my, I came out of practice with my dad in 2000, and my dad got really, really sick in 2001. Now, he didn't have Lyme. But the story is leads us down to this pathway, and, and it's why one of the feeling like I, one of the sole purpose feelings that or callings that I feel like I have is to help people that are afflicted with this bacterial disease. So my dad gets really sick; uh, liver enzymes go off the charts. His uh, his skin gets crazy, like thick and and swarthy, like elephant skin. He's got. He got these white patches on his arms, so you start thinking of psoriasis, but it's not psoriasis. Uh, horrible bowel problems, eye, eye problems, they, they swell shut, and we start taking him to the different medical specialists. This is 20 years ago. And what do they say? Well, he has either a virus that we don't know about, and, and this is 11 years before the bug from China. And then what happens is, that, well, he might have pancreatic cancer or liver cancer. And in his liver, like his enzymes, they're supposed to be 25 to 30, and they're 1,700. And uh, I'm trying to figure this out. We're going to the different specialists, and I'm at a medical conference in Kansas City, Missouri, and I run into a healer. And, I've, and I talk about this all the time on the podcast. You want to know what uh, the difference between a doctor and a healer is? Well, healers are just up here. And, uh, and so anyway, so I meet Dr. Taylor. He's a healer. And what happens is he tells me, Jason, your dad has scurvy. That's what's wrong with him. And I'm thinking, wait a minute, scurvy? Scurvy was solved hundreds of years ago. Like he doesn't have scurvy. Like James Lynn said that sailors in the British Empire, if they eat salt tack and, and, you know, and pork, you know, brine pork for extended time period, like they had all these problems like stomach problems and skin problems. And by the way, their eyes, like I'm going through the symptoms, like, oh my gosh, 
Is it possible that my dad has scurvy? Well, the backstory is that he had a mercury post with a crown on it. He bit down into a walnut. It cracks the crown. He gets some of the mercury into the system. And guess what? That heavy metal, it makes it so that he can't absorb anything. Guess what? He has scurvy. So what does Dr. Taylor tell me to do? And again, mad props to Dr. Taylor. He says, you got to get your dad some vitamin C infusion therapy. So we get him this enormous amount of vitamin infusion therapy. My dad goes from one foot into the grave to back to work in 30 days. This was in August of 2001, literally 20 years ago. And it's such an amazing pathway. I go back to school I get another doctoral degree in naturopathic medicine in a naturopathic school so that I can do vitamin infusion treatments. So well, that's what I started doing. And in that process, I run into a teacher inside of the curriculum and he's like, hey, do you know that there's this huge infectious disease problem that causes enormous health problems? And it's misdiagnosed, it's misunderstood, it's mismanaged. And it's such a problem. And what's happening is people are getting the wrong diagnosis and then they're starting down a treatment pathway that isn't fixing their immune system. It's, it's basically covering up symptoms. And he's talking about Lyme disease and, and literally here's what happens when he tells me that I got two voices, like one on each shoulder, like one here, one here. This is what I learned about Lyme disease in my undergraduate work at Utah State University, that it's a bacterial, it's a vector-borne disease from from ticks that causes a bullseye rash and some joint pain and two weeks of antibiotics and pretty much everybody's healed next disease. Very, very rare that that people don't respond to PTLDS, which is post-treatment Lyme disease syndrome. I didn't even learn that in uh at utah state which by the way i love that school i'm an aggie i'm a true aggie and then i go into my first doctoral program with the southern california university of health sciences and what do i learn about lyme disease like first of all we hope that it's on a test like i can remember studying with my with my uh, buddies and we were like well yeah lyme disease on the test vector borne disease uh, found in lyme connecticut uh, bullseye rash two weeks of doxycycline and rocephin healed every, you know, next disease. So I hear this from my naturopathic doctor, my the instructor, and he says there's this Lyme disease and immediately that training um, gets in the way of your intelligence, right? Your education kicks in because it's poison education, but you don't know it at the time. So this, that kicks in and he says, this is what's happening. I'm like, wait, but he doesn't know what he's talking about. Like, I've been through four years of undergrad, four years of school. You know, I get the Outstanding Senior Award, Outstanding Resident Award, the President's Award in school. Like, I don't hear any of this stuff. And then I get into practice, and we're in Idaho, right? So Idaho is not like Tickville, right? Tickville is, you know, Minnesota and Missouri and Virginia and Connecticut. At least that's what, again, poison information. And I can hear my dad telling me, hey, don't let – your education get in the way of your intelligence because you get educated and you think that that's the, that's how it is, but that's not how it is. Right. So what happens is I go into the next realm and the next realm is thinking of, Oh my gosh, I know a lot of people that have this condition. Like if this is true. And so he starts saying, you know, neuro behavior disorders, neurodegenerative disorders, psychiatric disorder. So it's messing up your neuro, your, your neurology and, and your nervous system. Um, and then, then, then he starts going and it's autoimmune disorders. So people that have chronic fatigue, like you need to know if they have Lyme disease and if people have fibromyalgia, like you need to know. And, and if they have polymyalgia rheumatica or if they have mixed connective tissue disease or if they have lupus or if they have ankylosing spondylitis, like, is it possible that they have Lyme disease? And so that was the approach is it possible? And, and, and then the next thing was like, well, how do you test for this stuff? Right? Because the normal testing, and, and, and we're going to get more into this in a future master classes, the normal testing for this is the Western blot test. And sometimes they do, you know, ELISA test and 
way back a couple years ago, he thought, okay, well, maybe there's PCR testing. And, and don't get me started on PCR testing. It wasn't designed for clinical medicine. <laughs> so whether it was it's, it's Lyme disease or the other thing that's happening in the world right now, it's not – like, that's not an appropriate use. And, and now knowing way more about PCR testing, like, it's definitely not the right use. Okay, again, going back to medical opinion and why I'm not on the social media platforms. I'm on my own web station. Like, I'm streaming it on my own channel. And the reason why is because then it allows me to be genuine and authentic. And guess what? You know, I'm going to have way bit less reach. I don't care. Because the people that do show up that are here, like you're going to get the full experience. Like you're going to get what I know, what I've, dis what I've discovered. So anyway, as luck would have it, you learn about something. And I have the two people here. Like he doesn't know what he's talking about. And, and, and I know a lot of people that have Lyme. And this lady brings her daughter into the office that's been in the University of Utah often, I mean, intensive care for months, and they literally put her on hospice and sent her home to die. And the mom drives her to the office and says, my daughter's dying. Do you have anything that we can do for her? And, and I literally think in my head, hey, I think she's got Lyme disease. So the mom says, well, you know, she grew up on a sheep farm. Now, the, granted, the sheep farms in Idaho had lots of tick exposures, and this is, we haven't really tested her for this. And so immediately I'm thinking, uh, world's greatest doctor, here I come, uh, undiagnosed before, non-responsive to medical treatment for years, kicked out of the hospital system, put on hospice, goes home to die. And again, this is 15 years ago. And then the mom drops the bomb on me. So what's the bomb? What are you going to do about it? And I start saying, well, usually they do, you know, antibiotic therapy, uh, doxycycline, rocephin, uh, ciprofloxin, maybe they pulsate it with some, you know, some of the antifungals or, or try some other different medicines and, and manage pain inflammation and do, you know, hyperbaric oxygen. And mom's like, we did, we did that, we did that, we did that, we did that, we did that. What are you going to do for my little girl? Like, she's dying. You got to do something. And I said, and like, I reach back into my, like, my bag of therapies and the one that comes up is the one that helped my dad so much. When he had the heavy metal therapies and what helped him was the vitamin C treatments. And so I pulled the book off the shelf, Curing the Incurable by Dr. Tom Levy, which is like one of the, the most amazing individuals that I've ever met. And what happens is I talk to him on the phone. And I'm like, hey, you know, I got this girl. She's really sick. I'm... I'm starting, I'm thinking I'm doing these big treatments. So the RDA levels of vitamin C is 500 uh, milligrams. And, uh, and, th and then you get some supplements and you get up to 1,500. Then I read his book and it's saying go up to bowel tolerance and then back off. And Dr. Levy's saying this girl, like if she's dying, you need to give her like the biggest dose ever. And, and I said, well, what is it? And he's like, whatever you have the courage to give her, but probably 100,000 milligrams. And I'm thinking 100,000 milligrams. Okay, the RDA is 500. Twice the RDA is 1,000. You know, 2,000 times or 20, 200 times, I guess. 200 times 500 is going to be 100,000, you know. I hope my math's right. Anyway, it's a lot more than the RDA levels. And I'm nervous about it. So I'm telling the mom, what are we going to, and the mom's like, you got to do something. We have nothing to lose. So I give it to her. So we started the drip about four o'clock. Um, I think I'm, I'm almost positive it's Tuesday. And, and we're going on a slow drip rate because I'm like worried. Is it, is it going to, and, uh, and it lit it literally we go all night. It's 12 o'clock, one o'clock in the morning. And the kind of the, the uh, drip rolls out. Mom and dad are there, and I, and I'm there. I've, I've never done this before, and uh, and and the patient seems to be just fine. Um, you know, it's in a rough state anyway. And uh, so the the mom and dad take her over to the motorhome, which is parked next side of the office. Like I go home and shower, and I come back to the office. And about twelve one o'clock the next day, what happens is the girl walks into the office. Now she is really sick. Um, and, but, but instead of being carried in, she walks in and, and it makes me think of the, 
uh, you know, the Staples commercial where you just hit the button. They say that's e- that was easy because I looked at her and I'm like, OK, it doesn't take a rocket scientist like you just repeat that therapy, like do that again. Right. Just push the button. And so she gets better literally incrementally. Now, this wasn't a super fast response, but it was consistent improvement. Big doses of vitamin C, 100,000 milligrams. You put your B vitamins in it. You put your magnesium and, and potassium. And then I, I've shared with people a lot on the podcast, like the importance of draining lymph nodes with potassium and hydrochloric acid. It's the, in that article that's inside of our library, three years of hydrochloric acid therapy. You got to incorporate this into Lyme treatments because the change that you can get in the hydrogen ion content of the jails of the body, also known as the lymph nodes. Like that's what helps the body to uh, to process infection. And and the reason why so many people don't hear about it is because you can't patent magnesium, you can't patent hydrochloric acid. You can do it orally or intravenously. It's like, that's one of the products that I recommend right underneath. And, And by the way, the reason why I put the product bundles together is I just want people to know like this is what has, I've seen really good outcomes with this. I've seen really good outcomes with Epstein Bar, and with chronic cold stores, and with West Nile recovery. Like I've seen this in practice. And again, I'm a clinician. I'm not a researcher. And so, what does that mean? Like I just want to help Mrs. Smith in front of me. And I get up and I read every single morning. And I'm walking down the hall and I'm asking my supreme being for for inspiration about patients. And this is one of the things that shows up. And we're, so we start doing this. We start doing high IV vitamin C with her. We start doing hydrochloric acid and potassium therapy. And then I ran into William Campbell Douglas therapy on dilute hydrogen peroxide therapy. So it's a, it's a fascinating because it's a really, really low dose like it's a one to 100 dilution and he talks about the power of oxygen and some other things. It's a really slow infusion rate, which is really fascinating because I've probably done this at least a hundred thousand times over the last 15 years with really good outcomes for people. I do like, and you know what? I get this notice just yesterday on Google uh, reviews about some wingnut that leaves me this horrible review by saying, you're mainlining hydrogen peroxide therapy. That will kill people. Like this lady has no healthcare experience, nothing experienced. It gets this crazy idea in her head that like it's the most frustrating thing ever because lady, if you're listening, if you ever see one of the podcasts or whatever, like before you think, that it doesn't work or it kills. Like you should get more educated and informed that the thousand video testimonies that we have on the therapy and William Campbell Douglas, who's the godfather of, you know, hydroperoxide and oxidative medicine with no adverse reactions. And you, you think that we're mainlining it and killing people. Like what's wrong with you? Like, you know, you have no education to make or no feedback or no baseline to even say something like that. It's fascinating to me of, of, of someone saying something and being like, oh, that's going to kill people. Well, have you ever done it? You ever tried it? You don't have any experience with it? Nope. I just know you don't know anything. So when you say, anyway, so we start doing that with the patient and she starts getting progressively better. They post a little video on this little website at the time called YouTube. And all of a sudden people started showing up from all over the place from Kentucky, from Missouri, from Alaska, from California, from New Jersey, from Connecticut, from Maine. And I start recognizing, like, it's a way bigger problem. And it's so underreported, and and it's a misinformation. And by the way, like, some of the testing, it's like some of the worst things ever to test for for chronic Lyme disease. The Western blot test is an inappropriate test. That's not, like, it's not going to... It's not going to give you good information unless it's recently, like in the first couple weeks after exposure, I think it's a reasonable test. If you've had it, I'm going to say, you know, 90 plus days, what's happening, like it's not useful. And then you've, what you've got to do with any type of chronic infection or Lyme disease, you got to balance the body. It's all about balance, balance hormones, balance biomechanics, balance emotions, uh, energy balance, like all of these different modalities. And then you get some really, really good outcomes. And I'm so proud of the patient success stories we have, particularly with Lyme. 
So one of the things is we start doing these master classes, and, and I, I literally said I want to work on some stuff to make sure that the technology and the platform is doing pretty well before I go into something that I think is really, really going to help people. And the reason why is because this is one of the things that's so incredibly important. So you want to make sure if you have concerns about this, one, if you have autoimmune or, or conditions that don't make a lot of sense, please evaluate and go to someone that can rule in or rule out. And, and I've had, I had a patient today, drove you know, five hours to the office. And the reason why they, they was like, Hey, your doctor wants to know if you have, have Lyme disease. And guess what? She didn't have it. No. And people that have chronic problems doesn't always mean that they have this, but it's really, really important to know about. And then it's also really important to know about some of the, the, the common symptoms, you know, bullseye rash, skin problems. I, I jokingly tease patients that have chronic Lyme that that bacteria turns them into a vampire. And, and how does it do that? Like it makes it so you can't function in the day and you can't sleep at night. Now I have a, a hypothesis or I have a clinical suspicion that that bacteria gets into your pineal gland and really messes up your melatonin centers. And, and melatonin is this, I don't think it's a very well understood hormone because most of the time people think that it's for sleep, but I think it has an enormous immune system regulating effect. So that's number one. And then the next thing that I would say is that it gets in and it hides inside the system. And, and it's so like just fascinating and terrible and how it fools in the immune system. And what you have to do is you have to stimulate humoral and cell mediated immunity. You got to work on your lymph nodes and your thymus gland and your spleen, and you got to get your immune system working really well. So I put together a quick little handout and then I'm giving a whole bunch of, of lectures about Lyme disease, about, you know, where it come from. First Lyme disease case, 1974, first recognized in 1975. It was named after the doctor that discovered Dr. Willie Bergerdorfi, um, how Bradford research came in and did this medical research study using dark field microscopies. And, and some of the, the ideas behind this is that maybe there's other things that can transmit it. Is, is it human to human? Like that's one of the questions I get asked all the time. Dr. West, do you think that you can you transmit this? Well, the medical answer is no. And then I want to say this, well, What's a cousin, close cousin to Lyme disease? It's this infectious bacteria called spiro, spirochetes. Uh, what's another disease for spirochetes? Well, it's this thing called you know, syphilis. Can syphilis be transmitted from human to human? Yes. Can Lyme disease be transmitted from human to human? Like, I think so. That's my opinion. It's certainly not supported in the medical realm at all. Like, that's not accepted. Uh, some of the common conditions, you know, acne, ADD, anorexia, anxiety. Now, if you have acne, does it mean you have Lyme disease? It doesn't. It, can it be a contributing problem? Can it be a factor in lupus, in scleroderma, in rheumatoid arthritis, in ankylosing spondylitis? And I think that it does. And I think there's multiple forms of the bacteria. Again, this is my observation in practice. Mobile form, the L form, the cis form. I think that there's some interesting medical research things that are considerations and, uh, and why traditional tests and treatments don't work. Like one of the problems that I see is so many providers with Lyme disease are like, okay, let's just blitz you with antibiotic therapy. And I think that there is a time and a place for antibiotic therapy, but in long-term Lyme disease, uh, it's been my observation. Like, I don't think that's the best pathway forward. And if you think about what antibiotics do is it's anti-life therapy. So if you have a, a acute infection, you could take this thing that absolutely like hammers the, the bacteria. But if it's, not responding that way and you keep giving someone uh, antibiotic therapy like we know that that's not a good pathway forward so that being said um you know i really like doing some energy assessments i like high dose vitamin c treatment and i put in my slides like effective treatment like that's effective treatment that i see 
So I don't want anybody saying, well, where's your studies? Like, I don't have studies. All I know is that when Mrs. Smith comes in the office or Mr. Anderson, I do my best to help them. I see some really good outcomes. After we get the outcomes, I ask them for a video testimonial. Now we're over a 1,000 testimonials on the different conditions. And I'm like, every time people come in, I just want to help balance. And so that was the purpose of our initial Lyme disease masterclass is to tell people, look, you're not your diagnosis. This is a chronic, complex, problematic diagnosis uh, condition. There's different ways to evaluate it. And, and proof can be in the pudding. And here's what I mean by that. Like if, if you suspect someone has Lyme disease and you go to balance them, you help your immune system and you clean out their lymph nodes and, and, you, and you really, really help to get their thymus gland to work and, the, and they get better, well, guess what? Maybe you're, you're onto something. And you're going to meet people through this uh, Lyme disease masterclass program that have been to five and seven and 17 and 27 doctors. And where they've tried different things. And then we put them on a program where like, let's just do a full body makeover. Let's work on it. Then you see outcomes. So I hope you enjoyed the first segment of the masterclass. Uh, a couple things that I think are really good and are really important to know about and that is, let me get to, to my uh, thing, a couple recommendations for people to, to get some help. And that is inside of the program just underneath me. I, I'm having problems with my mouse. So here it is. The things underneath you, like I think the most important thing to do is to simulate your immune system in a healthy way. And I really like um, draining lymph nodes. That's why I put together the, the potassium and the betaine hydrochloride. This is based upon the study by Dr. Guy and Dr. Burr Ferguson in the 1930s. It's written up in a scientific a abstract called Three Years of Hydrochloric Acid Therapy. I love this stuff called Epi-Immune. And then liposomal vitamin C is probably my single favorite uh, medicine. So I put those links below. If people need resources, great. If you don't need resources, Please do something for your immune system, especially with all of the craziness, with the pandemic and stuff that's going around. Um, liposomal vitamin C, there's lots of places to get it. This happens to be my, my favorite brand. You mix ascorbic acid with the fat, and you get this mycelial formation around the medicine. And then when it's inside your GI system, there's a better chance that it getting into your bloodstream without denaturing the vitamin active vitamin C complex. That's the whole basically premise behind liposomal vitamin C. Other considerations that I think are really important for this, uh, high dose vitamin D therapy. Uh, vitamin D is my second favorite vitamin. Vitamin C is first, vitamin D is second. And, and I think that's important. Also, something really important for people that are having a lot of joint pain and ligament problems and everything with vitamin C, don't forget this. One of the things that they think makes the Borrelia burgdorferi, that bacteria that causes Lyme's disease, Part of the, the chronic instability of joint pains and stuff like that is it needs manganese to survive. Now, manganese is a mineral, and it's often confused with magnesium, but what my dad taught me about manganese is this. It's so important to regulate ligament health. It's the mineral that really helps ligaments to be healthy, but it also has an incredibly important effect on your hormone formation because it really helps to work on the pituitary gland. The pituitary gland is between your eyes and between your ears. And it's kind of like the office manager for the body. Like it has such an important effect on the thyroid, on the adrenals. It integrates with the hypothalamus and the brain. It's, it secretes and regulates growth hormone. And guess what? Manganese is important mineral function. So that's why I put some stuff underneath. Um, before I forget, uh, the second thing over, lomatium. Um, this stuff is incredible. It's a Native American herb. It's a wild crafted herb. And what it does is it, it basically helps the immune system to regular, to, to function well. I, I think it's so good for sore throats. I think it's really good for staph infections. I think it's really, really good for the common cold in my experience. It tastes not good. So if you decide to get this, um, which I, again, Lomatium, I think is such uh, just a forgotten um, thing for your arsenal if you get sick. It, it's important to know about. And, and my dad taught me, and, and again, my dad practiced for 51 years. I was so fortunate to practice with him for 11 years. And he, he, this is one of his go-to things, and he would always tell patients and staff when they got sick, 
that there's a reason why bacteria does, doesn't like it because it tastes so bad, but man, it's like good stuff. So that's underneath. Epiimmune has some different mushroom complex, some calcium, has some vitamin C and echinacea, and, and again, the potassium and the hydrochloric acid. When you mix that together, we put it in together a, a little pack, and when you have that, uh, I just see really good outcomes with that. So, everyone, that is the part one of the Lyme disease report. It's my Lyme story. It's my beginning observations. I can't wait for you to meet the hundreds of people that have been on the journey with me that I've been able to be a part of their process and guide them through a, a system where they become the hero of their own story and they beat their disease. So that's it for this week. We're getting ready to at seven o'clock to go over to our Thrivers program. That's a special opportunity to work with me and do a virtual office visit every week from seven to eight o'clock. If you'd like more information, it's at the westclinic.com. Um, and that it tells you a little bit about it. You get a year of customized supplements. You get a kickoff call. You get a fr uh, free office visit for you. You get a ride along office visit, which means that you have someone that can come with you because no one wants to be on the health journey by themselves. But also what's fun to do about that, with, especially with, with spouses, is you want both spouses to be healthier. You want everybody to live up here and not down here. So we call this our Thrivers program. And every single week we go in and we ask questions and we do a whole bunch of stuff with our Thrivers community. I, I, it's, I think it's my favorite hour of the week because I don't have any other distractions around. I don't have someone asking me for help trying to maintain a schedule inside of the office. Like it's just me in my little studio answering questions one-on-one -on -one every week at seven o'clock. That's where I'm heading next. Next week, we're going to be doing some more Lyme um, information. This is a multi-part series. It's one of the things I'm really, really passionate about. And I think it's so applicable now because if someone walks into the office and they say, I've got a staph infection, you know what I say? Let's get your immune system working. Let's really get after it. And they came in and they say, I have E. coli or Epstein-Barr, or they are saying, I, I have long haul uh, COVID, or I'm trying to recover from that. Every single response, let's do what we can to get your body balanced so your immune system turns on. Because if you do that, you get a good outcome. This is Dr. Jason West. I will see you guys next week. Here's to your energy, your